So now let's summarize what we've learned about Amazon S3, and I know that's a lot. So first of all, we've learned about the difference between buckets and objects. So we know that buckets must have a global unique name, and it's tied to a specific region, and objects live within these buckets. For S3 security, we've seen that we can attach IAM policies to users or to roles. We've seen that we can also use S3 bucket policies. For example, we granted public access into an S3 bucket, and we can set up S3 encryption to protect some files. We can enable websites on an S3 bucket. This is the idea to host a static website on Amazon S3. You first need to make sure that the bucket, of course, is going to be public, and then we can statically host some files. We have S3 versioning. This is to have multiple versions for a file to prevent against accidental deletes and to be able to roll back to previous versions if we need to. We've seen there are two kinds of S3 replication. You have the same region replication and the cross region replication. And for them to work, you must enable versioning beforehand. We've seen the different S3 storage classes. We have standard, infrequent access, one zone infrequent access, intelligent tiering, and we have three different classes for the glacier for archival purposes. We've seen what the Snow family is. So there are physical devices that are used to import data onto Amazon S3. So you have like the snowmobile, you have the snow cone, you have the snowballs and so on. And if you use a snow cone or a snowball edge device, then you can do edge computing on your data. Ops Hubs is a way to get a desktop application to manage your Snow family devices and add data onto them. And finally, we've seen a way to extend on-premises storage onto Amazon S3 that is using the AWS Storage Gateway. So now it's a big lesson, but hopefully now you know all the specificity of Amazon S3 that will allow you to answer all the questions you need at the exam. That's it. I will see you in the next section.